Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So today in this pro tip I'm going to talk a little bit about forge design. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I will say it now uh, just to take and get it out there. Please excuse the shaky camera footage. I do not have a gimbal for the camera. Uh, I will do my best to hold still. Didn't know any other way of taking and doing this and showing, showcasing what I'm talking about here. So, forge designs, a few things that you want to take into consideration when you're designing a forge or when you make a forge or when you install a forge uh, for your specific purpose is the actual design. Uh, and that's going to come down to several key elements. Here is a Menkel gas forge. This is my gas forge in my shop. It's a fairly large forge. It's a three burner, four stair uh, gas forge and it serves me very very well. It allows me to do everything from really super large pieces uh, down to you know moderately small pieces uh, or billets or hammers or this or that or what have you. Now with that being said when you're considering building a gas forge or buying a gas forge you want to take and buy a gas forge with your maximum capacity in mind. Now that means how big of a piece of material can you fit in here and will that work for you? Also, does it work for you on things like scrolls or whatever else you're getting into? Are you working with mostly flat straight material or are you working with something that's going to have to be bent up in a bunch of crooked different weird ways and that's kind of your main body of work? All that will go into your buying decision. If you need something that can handle scrolls and things like that, I can highly suggest a Mankel gas forge or something that's open on three sides. It really does help to give you some uh, universality, if you will. But the main purpose of this video, I wanted to take and show one of the biggest problems of this forge, and it's this elbow right here. This elbow, let me come back here, maybe I'll get a little different angle. This elbow here is too short for where my blower's at. And the reason for that, or the reason why that's a problem, is if you notice that plate sitting up there, whenever there's some dragon's breath that comes out the back here, shooting out the back, it can heat this pipe right here. So that is kind of a bad design choice in this forge. Certainly, it would be even worse if I just bolted the blower just straight to that end right there. Uh, if I bolted it just straight to the center collar right here versus having a big pipe out there, uh, you would burn it up. It would just bur get burned up. So even with this design forge, it could use some improvement. Maybe like an exact 90 right here long before it sticks over where there would be a chimneying effect. Now they do make doors. There's a little sheet metal door that you're supposed to put on that end, but that doesn't help much when you're running a super long piece through the forge. You're running a super long piece through the forge. That becomes an issue to create a little heat, heat shield for that. So I had to provide a little heat block shield to protect my blower on the back end. And that there should probably be wrapped with some K-wool uh, in order to protect the paint job and for it not to end up catching fire, the paint. So those are just some considerations there. Uh, also, one of the last considerations I want to talk about is you do not need a super huge forge for every job. Uh, for instance, if I had to run this forge to make little horseshoe nail hooks, it would make the cost exuberantly so for the little nail hooks that it wouldn't be worth making the hooks. The profit margin wouldn't be that big. So therefore it wouldn't be worth making the hooks. So in that case, it's a lot easier to take and use a smaller inside chamber, like a one brick or a two or three brick gas forge for making smallish like items. So keep that in mind. There is a minimum uh, size requirement after you get so big of a gas forge to where the cost is uh, just not worth it. If you're turning out a bunch of S hooks and you've got a three, three burner gas forge, that's going to cost you more than if you're turning out S hooks in a little one burner, you know, four brick kind of forge type deal. So just a few things to keep in mind when you're designing a gas forge. I just wanted to point that out because I was dealing with some chimneying. Uh, I was dealing with some dragon's breath issues there and I thought it might help somebody out there. 
So that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like. If you didn't, there's always that de thumbs down option. Either way, let me know what you thought in the comment section down below. And if you haven't checked out our website recently, we've had a lot of new additions, uh, blacksmith cheat sheets and power hammer plans and things like that. Go check out our website at blacksmithpdfs.com. Uh, the link for that will be in the description down below. And uh, hopefully we'll see you over there. So without further ado, I'm going to get back to forging. God bless you all and have a great day.